Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. A special word of welcome to those who are visiting today. It's a pleasure to have you join us for worship. Our worship begins as we confess our sin together and hear God's word of forgiveness for us all. I invite you to stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Dear friends, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will to all. Lord, we pray. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without you nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Embrace us with your mercy, that we with you as your guide, we may live through what is temporary without losing what is eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Malachi. See, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts. So that is that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who revere my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. The word of the Lord. Righteousness seen. 
hearts clap their hands, the people for joy, for God comes to judge the earth. Sing to the Lord, oh sing a new song. He has done wonderful things. His power and holiness make him victorious. His righteousness seen by all. The second reading is for Thessalonians. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition that they receive from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We, we were not idle when we were with you, and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor, we worked night and day so that we might not burden any of you. This was not because we do not have that right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command. Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness mere busybodies, not doing any work. Now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not weary in doing what is right. The word of the Lord. Be to, God. to God. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified. For these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and plagues. And there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons. And you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify so make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. This time I'd like to invite the kids forward for children's time. So we got a couple today. Come on up, guys. <laughs> Raindrops, oceans, lakes, and rivers welcome child of God. Father's father.
Good morning, guys. Welcome to worship today. Uh, I'm doing a little bit of show and tell. I often do this for children's time, bring something to show you. And this is something that's very special to me. It doesn't look like much. Uh, it's kind of a beat up, old, torn up, little tiny, tiny book. Uh, but this is a book of Bible verses. Uh, it's got all kinds of different Bible verses in here. And this belonged to my great grandfather. His name was Fred Denning. And he was in World War I. Now, war is one of the, if not the most, terrible thing that uh, human beings can do to each other. It's very, very scary. And my great-grandpa was in World War I, and he took this um, little booklet, this book of Bible verses, uh, he took it with him to the war. And he wore a helmet, and it had some netting up inside the helmet, and he tucked it up in the netting on, inside his helmet, and he took this with him throughout the war. In the trenches in France, it was always with him. So he carried God's promises with him throughout the war. And I like to think or I like to hope that it made him a little bit less afraid. I'll tell you, this is a real treasure that I get to, I get to have it now. Hmm? In our gospel reading for today, Jesus says that there are going to be wars and there's going to be other scary things that happen in the world. But Jesus also gives promises. He says, do not be terrified. He says, I will give you words and a wisdom. Here are the words right here, right? I will give you words and a wisdom. He says, not a hair on your head will perish. We still hear about scary things that happen. Maybe you overhear things on the news, or maybe you hear adults talking about things that sound scary, or maybe they're just things that happen that are scary in your own life. Uh, but we are all here today. Whenever we encounter scary things, we're invited to hold on to the promises that God gives us. We can carry the promises of God with us. We don't have to tuck them up inside a helmet, but we can keep them close to our head, right? We can remember Jesus said, don't be afraid. I will give you words and a wisdom. Uh, I will be with you. I will be with you. Not a hair on your head will perish. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you have sent us your son to deliver these amazing promises to us. Uh, we pray that you would help us to carry them with us as we go through life, especially in times that are scary for us. Uh, help us to know that you are near. Help us to hold fast to your word so that we wouldn't be so afraid. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up, guys. Dear friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There's a phenomenon which has developed in the internet age which has been called doom scrolling or doom surfing. These phrases refer to the widespread habit of spending excessive amounts of time basting your brain in negative news. I think we could add doom watching to the lexicon as well as many people do the same thing with 24-hour news channels. That device in your pocket, that phone, or that computer on your lap or on the desk, wherever you keep it, and, and that TV in your living room has the power to deliver a steady stream of bad news. It comes at us nonstop. And it is usually the worst news that trends and the most berserk voices which get the most attention. And for some reason, we're all glued to it. This doom scrolling brings us news of wars, of missiles being test fired, and of contingency plans if things go nuclear. It brings us news of crime and riots and shootings, as happened at Ingram High School this last week with a 14 and a 15 year old being arrested afterwards. It brings us news about the possibility of famine in some parts of the world, especially as Ukraine, the, the breadbasket of the European continent, uh, has faced immense logistical challenges in getting its crops in and then distributed to where it needs to go. It brings us news of earthquakes and fires and hurricanes and other natural disasters. On January 18th in 2020, it brought us news that a new virus, which had already devastated China and Italy, had been found for the first time in the United States, in Seattle. 
Since then, until very recently, our, our news feeds have been full of pandemic-related news. That stream has even recently brought us talk of signs in the stars. I heard several commentators noting this last week that we would have a blood moon on election day. And they were, they were speculating, mostly in tongue-in-cheek, I think, on, on what that would mean. I think it meant different things depending on who was talking about it. On a more personal level, social media brings us news of families that are divided and broken. In church media circles and social media groups, you can find a million posts and articles and podcasts about the challenges facing the church today, from apathy and unbelief to cultural hostility to outright persecution, depending on where you live. With all of this doom scrolling or doom surfing or doom watching, it can feel sometimes like the world is coming apart. And in our gospel reading for today, Jesus says, told ya. Today we hear Jesus telling his disciples what they could expect in the future. The temple that they were admiring with its massive stones would be thrown down, Jesus said, and that happened. There's nothing left of the temple in Jerusalem except about 60 feet of one limestone wall. The rest was pounded into dust by the Romans in 70 A.D. Told you, Jesus said. This bad news was so shocking that the disciples assumed it would usher in the end times. But, but Jesus said, nope, not, not yet. He warned that many would come in his name, saying that they knew when the end was coming. Well, that still happens to this day. Told ya, Jesus says. Jesus says that all kinds of bad things would happen in the world. Wars and insurrections, nation rising up against nation, great earthquakes in various places, famines and plagues. He speaks of family members betraying one another and the church being persecuted and hated. And this has happened throughout history. There's no time since Jesus spoke these words that there haven't been wars and rumors of war. There's no time since Jesus said this when there haven't been natural disasters or famines or plagues. In the 14th century, the plague was so bad that it killed up to 60% of the human population in Europe. Nations and families and the church have always had periods of suffering and struggle, and it continues to this day. Told ya, Jesus says. Jesus is brutally honest about the world that we live in. He is exceedingly accurate in describing the things that have and, and continue to come to pass. But Jesus says so much more than just told ya. Woven into all of this doom preaching are reasons for hope. Nestled into this stream of bad news coming from Jesus' mouth is good news. Jesus doesn't just give us predictions. He also gives us promises. First, as Jesus is describing this doom-plagued world that we live in, he says to us, do not be terrified. In spite of wars and insurrections, disasters and diseases, brokenness and hatred, Jesus tells us to not be afraid. These things are going to happen. It does not mean that the end will follow immediately. It does not necessarily mean that the world is coming apart tomorrow. It is certainly not reason to give up hope. Do not be terrified, Jesus says. A bit later, Jesus says, I will give you words and a wisdom. Now, the immediate context here is for when his disciples end up being dragged before kings and governors, of course. But, but I think this promise applies to so much more. Our Lord Jesus puts a word in our ears and in our hearts and in our mouths, which confounds our every foe. It is the word of what he has done for us. It is the word that he is the Lord and we are his. It is the word of his grace and mercy which defeats sin, death, and the devil, our worst enemies. 
Jesus gives us a wisdom that can withstand every kind of doom that befalls us. He gives us this word as it is proclaimed in worship. He gives it to us in scripture. He attaches this word to water and bread and wine to get it into us in every way possible. The word and wisdom Jesus gives to us is so very powerful. Charles Spurgeon once said that a Bible that is falling apart usually belongs to someone who isn't. If you are doom scrolling or doom surfing or doom watching and never cracking open your Bible or coming to worship or to Bible study, if you do that, the world is going to seem like a very dark place. Hope is going to be very hard to find. You'll get all of the the predictions delivered right to your phone as they come to pass, but none of the promises that our Lord Jesus gives. Bad things will happen, Jesus says, but not a hair on your head will perish. Now, for those of you who, like me, find fewer hairs on the crown of your head every morning, more of them in the drain maybe than on the back of your head, uh, maybe you see your forehead gets bigger all the time, or, uh, or maybe it's all already gone. I, I want to tell you, if that's the case for you, that Jesus isn't just talking about hair here. Jesus is promising to preserve our very lives. He's promising that God knows us and cares about us right down to the tiniest detail of our lives. And that he will deliver us, making us whole once again, restoring everything in us that is broken or lacking. These words of Jesus are spoken just days before Jesus himself would go to the cross and die for us. The suffering Jesus would experience was for our eternal salvation. On the Mount of Skulls, Jesus took the sin and suffering of this doom-plagued world upon himself. He experienced death for us and rose again to show us all that he has defeated it. He has overcome it all and he promises to share his victory with us. And so, although we will all die, we will not ultimately perish. Our death has already been died in him, and only the resurrection awaits. And so we do not need to be terrified about anything. By turning to Christ's word and wisdom, instead of marinating in the doom all around us, we find that he fills our hearts with a hope and a peace that can withstand any challenge. We will still hurt To be sure, we will still grieve, but as St. Paul says, we do not grieve as those who have no hope. Jesus is honest about what troubles we will face in this world, in this life. None of them are new to the human experience. Whenever you hear of them, I hope that you'll hear Jesus' voice saying, I told you, because he did tell us that this is what it would be like. We should never be surprised. But he didn't just give us predictions. He also gave us promises. And so when you find yourself all caught up in the doom of the world, I hope even more that you'll remember that Jesus also said, do not be terrified. I hope you'll remember that he said, I will give you words and a wisdom. I hope you'll remember that he said, not a hair on your head will perish. I know it feels sometimes like the world is coming apart. Maybe even like the end is near. Don't be fooled or led astray by those who think they know the signs or the timetable. Jesus warns us specifically against those wolves who come in the shepherd's clothing The Bible is not a book of clues to decipher, to to give us a, a hidden message about the end. It is instead a book of promises. And today Jesus promises us that though the end may yet be far off, the one who holds our lives and our future in his strong hands 
is very, very near. And so we do not need to be afraid. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing. And now let us confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us now pray for the church the world, and for all people in any need. Heavenly Father, we pray for your church, for your people in every place. Give us words and wisdom to meet the challenges of our time. Empower us to bear witness to an unbelieving and often hostile world. Fill us with hope in the future you have promised us. Strengthen and shield everyone persecuted on account of Jesus. By their faithful endurance, turn the hearts of their tormentors to Christ in repentance and faith. Lord, in your mercy. Creator God, we pray for your world as it groans under the weight of sin. As wars, natural disasters, famines, and plagues continue in this fallen world, 
Help us to not grow weary in doing what is right. Give us wisdom, compassion, and resources to help our neighbors in need as we await the day when you will restore all things. Lord, in your mercy. On this Veterans Day weekend, we lift up to you all who have served in our nation's armed forces in defense of life and liberty. We give thanks for their service, and we honor their families and the great sacrifices they make. We pray today also for those who are currently serving, especially those serving deployments in regions of conflict or danger. Be their guard and their guide, and bring them home safely and soon. Lord, in your mercy, God of all hope and healing, we pray for those who are hurting, for the sick, the dying, and those who grieve. We pray for those suffering from broken relationships. Shine your mercy and love on all in need, that the Son of Righteousness would bring the healing that you have promised. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you are the author of all life. We give you thanks today for those in our congregation who are celebrating birthdays this week, including Rochelle Donwin, Katie Zimmerman, Mike Dilley, and Moira Bartrand. Bless these friends with the joy of your presence as they celebrate. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you established the covenant of marriage and you made it a sign of your steadfast love. We celebrate with those in our congregation who are celebrating wedding anniversaries this week, including Roger and Georgette Anglum, Lauren and Ann Wheeler, Zion Conjo and Gail Dobbin, and Sal Carvalho and Fatima Lopez. Continue to bind these couples together joyfully as one. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, we pray for this congregation for all whom you have gathered to worship this day. In the midst of the troubles we face in our world and in our lives, help us to hold fast to your promises that we would live in hope and peace and not be afraid. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up our prayers to you, O God, trusting your promise to hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you now to share a sign of God's peace with one another. A few announcements to share with you this morning. Uh, First, an announcement from Mr. Tom Piper. Tom Piper would like to thank Dusty Rhodes, Judy Fantazzi, Lola the Dog, uh, Linda Linda Walgren, um, Rita Klein, David and Colleen Lura, and Gary Johnson, all for their help with landscaping work that happened on Friday and Saturday of this week. Uh, Let's give them all a round of applause. Thank you so much. And thanks to Tom, too. Appreciate you, Tom. Uh, Beads for Life is in the, or this is Gay Rodriguez, uh, one of her ministries. She is in the fellowship hall after worship today. Bead for Life, uh, beaded jewelry, which supports uh, women entrepreneurs in developing countries. Uh, So you can take a look at the beaded jewelry next door uh, that Gay Rodriguez has and learn more about that ministry if you're interested. 
Uh, confirmation class is happening from 6 until 8 tonight, so confirmation families, please make note of that. Uh, while usually I want you to keep your phones at home or at least in your pocket, I do need at least a few people to have phones with you tonight. We're going to do a, a, an activity that involves cell phones, so we need at least two or three of them. Uh, so go ahead and bring your phones tonight. We're, we'll make use of them. We have a coat drive going on right now. As the weather turns cold, our minds and hearts turn to those who uh, struggle to keep warm. Ooh, wow, there's a big pile of coats on there today, I see now uh, in the narthex. So thank you for your donations. Uh, continued donations can be brought to that receptacle there uh, in the narthex. Advent is coming and midweek services along with it. So we have our sign-up sheets out there on the round table in the narthex. We are going to be having soup suppers at noon and or worship at noon and six with soup suppers following. Uh, so we put those uh, sign-up sheets out there to get people to start to sign up to bring soup or bread or to sign up to help uh, with setup or cleanup. We appreciate you uh, picking a Wednesday and uh, helping us out. It's coming up sooner than you think probably. The insert has more announcements. I hope you'll take a look at our insert for today. Uh, the connection card is your place to sign up for different things that we have uh, volunteer needs of. Uh, and also, if you're a visitor today, whatever contact information that you're willing to share with us that we might make a further connection with you, that is appreciated. Those can be put in the offering plates when they come around. I'm talking about the yellow cards. Um, if you're not done in time before the offering plate gets to you, you can hand it to me on your way out. Our service does now continue with the offering. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we humbly offer to you the gifts of treasures, talents, and time. Use them to your glory and for the benefit of all your people. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Dear friends, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it for them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us now pray together using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus comes to us now through bread and wine. Come, for all is ready. Please be seated.
Please stand as you're able. And now the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace this day and always. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving living God, we thank you for feeding us with the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and to serve you as faithful witnesses of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.